Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of Joe's Rod Shop Podcast. Uh, it's always great to have everyone back here. Right, so um, just jumping straight into it. First let's go into last uh, Monday's episode, um, which was actually awesome. Uh, George was a great guest. Uh, we had a, some good feedback and a lot of guys are asking us about the website. Now, I, I wanted to, act, I needed to talk about the website a little bit more. Um, the website is tirelife.co.za. Now, if you go on there, uh, you will see they have that insurance system going on where you can actually insure the tires that goes onto your car. Okay, but now here's the other cool thing. Yes, we spoke about Cooper Tires and Mickey Thompson and the great bands. They also have Momo Tires. Um, for if, all the car, car guys would know what Momo is. Now, they don't just do the tires. They actually have a whole range of mag wheels. Now, for 4x4s. So, there's Procom, Mickey Thompson. Yes, Mickey Thompson has mag wheels. Um, as well, uh, dynamic steel wheels. So, they've got some really cool stuff out there. So, go to the website. Check out tirelife.co.za and go see what they've got available. Uh, I think you guys are really going to love this. Okay, but now on to today's episode. Now, this is one of those ones where this one called, got me completely by surprise. I sent these guys a message during lockdown. Came back and they went, oh, they've got a bunch of stuff they're busy working with. Um, maybe a little bit later. And I went, yeah, right. Like, they'll ever get back to me. And then they did. And it turns out that they've been watching the show and they really like it. And uh, yeah, they agreed to come on. So who am I talking to? His name is Chris Douglas. Chris Douglas is the COO of Edelbrock, uh, Comcam, uh, TCI, all these great brands. Yes, they have all merged into one big conglomerate, which I think is the coolest thing ever. Um, and Chris is on the show and he's actually talking to us about it, where he comes from and how this whole system came together. Um, so yeah, I was really taken back by this one. So yeah, without further ado, let me introduce you to Chris Douglas. Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm really excited about this one. Likewise, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's a pleasure to join you. I've watched some of the other shows and uh, just honored to be a guest. You've had a great list of uh, of people who've joined you, so it's an honor to be a part of that. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, we. we... It's amazing that the changes that lockdown did to to our business and and everything that we do. Yeah, how are things on how are things on your side? Yeah, it, it's been a crazy year, like everybody. Uh, twenty twenty has brought all kinds of new challenges and opportunities uh, with it. Just b before we we continue, um, I'm. Just for, for the guys that's going to be listening, can we just do an introduction of who you are and the company that you represent? Yeah, uh, appreciate the opportunity to do that. So my name is Chris Douglas. Uh, prior to January, I was the president of CompCams. After January, my new role was chief commercial officer of the new combined Edelbrock Comp uh, company. Uh, in addition to that, I am uh, on the board of directors for the SEMA Trade Association. So uh, oh, that's, nice. that's been an interesting dynamic through COVID as well. And we can talk about that. Uh, but I'm an industry guy. I grew up being a, a racer, uh, stock car racing, and uh, did for many, many years. And uh, landed here at Comp and uh, Comp for 17 years to the transaction. And now uh, to be a part of the Edelbrock Group. From our side, it really started back in January when we had a transaction, Edelbrock and Comp Cams coming together as one company. So we had a big change uh, after 30 some odd years of private ownership. Uh, and then we rolled straight into COVID and all the craziness of a pandemic. So it has been quite the interesting uh, year, but we're still standing and fighting and despite it all, Business has been really strong, and uh, that's totally unexpected. Going into the pandemic, I think most people thought that business was really going to be challenged, but it's been quite the opposite. But I mean, for that, that must have caused big problems on your side. I mean, that you've got two very large companies joining up. I mean, obviously there was enormous amount of plans and everything rolling in, you know, rollouts, and then all of a sudden that the whole world just shuts down. You know, there's nothing. I mean, that must have caused quite a, quite a bit of havoc on your side. 
Yeah, Joe, I don't know if you've ever heard that old adage, but everybody has a plan until you get punched in the nose, and that's kind of the way it went. Uh, we had a great plan, but then it went out the window, and uh, it became really about focusing on the, the fundamentals of the business, taking care of our people, and trying to do our best to serve the employees. Uh, that really became the priority until the dust kind of settled a bit from COVID, and uh, now we're trying to get back on track with some of the integration activities. So, so did you grow up in, in a racing uh, family, if I want to put it that way? I did. My father raced stock cars, uh, you know, local Saturday night type of racing. So I was the kid being up and down the straightaway playing and uh, had, a, had a dream to uh, race in NASCAR and chase that dream all the way through my teenage years up into my early 20s and uh, had great success. Uh, you know, I, I tell people all the time that I went to college, I got a degree in business, but the reality is I use the lessons from racing every day more than I do college. Wow, that's, that's beautiful putting it that way. And then, then how did you get into comp camps? I mean, that, that's, that, okay. The, the, it's like uh, e Edel, um, Edelbrock and Comcast, that's a staple of racing and hot rodding in, in the U.S. I mean, that must have been a big opportunity to start working with them. It was, you know, a really not a glamorous start, to be candid with you. Uh, it started, I was uh, in between race seasons. It happened to be time, uh, you know, uh, and I knew a couple as it comp from, uh, quite frankly, uh, need did nothing for a paycheck uh, in between race seasons and they asked me to come over uh they knew i had a marketing background and so came over to me and uh, you know thought it maybe a six month stop on my uh on my journey and reality uh, is longer and uh, they provided me a lot of opportunity over the years to keep growing CompCams was a very entrepreneurial company. It grew into a large company, but they really valued kind of entrepreneurial skills. Somebody would take a niche and, and just treat it like their own business. And the way I was programmed, my dad owned his own small businesses, was in that environment growing up and home when I got here. But uh, that's it. From all the guys I'm talking to, that, that mentality uh, looks like it, it's worked great for for the motoring side in the u.s is that even though it's a big i mean uh, uh, mike and them from uh, woolwood they, they said exactly the same thing you know you, you you have to have your your like your own business mentality to order in order to build a brand or something like that because i mean it, it was so unique um the, this aftermarket section that you guys actually did that's a great perspective, and I uh, agree completely. This industry really values companies that can be nimble and move quickly just by the nature of it. You know, we're always trying to one-up each other when it comes to products, and it's a competitive industry. So mm -hmm. it takes that entrepreneurial streak, if you will, somebody who's willing to go above and beyond, and we're really not doing it for the money. The truth is most people in this industry could probably go get a regular job and make more money but we're in this industry because we love it. Exactly, exactly. I mean, what's not to love? You guys get to spend time with the best, biggest drag guys in the world, with the biggest race car guys in the world, and and you get you get to spend your time with some of the biggest car builders that that's ever been out. I mean, and and now you guys have added Edelbrock, which is, I mean, that started hot riding. I mean, they, they they were the pioneers back in the day. Um, we, we actually, we, we had, um, when Mr. Edelbrock passed away, we did a story of him in my magazine. Uh, what a fascinating character. And and how they, what they went through in order to build Edelbrock up to, to where it is today. I mean, it's a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal story. Agreed. Uh, that's been one of the exciting things here is really getting closer to that business and understand stories and the history. You know, I've always admired Edelbrock from afar. You know, there there are some companies in, in the industry that you compete against. Uh, you know, maybe you have different, uh, but Edelbrock is always uh, admired here at Comp Cams. We competed in certain places, mm. always a high level of respect between the two. And now that I've been able to get closer and kind of listen to some of the stories, 
these two companies grew up in in the nerd. They had entrepreneurial street. They were really about doing what is right for the cup and having a lot of fun in in that process. And uh, being able to hear some about Vic on the airplane and some of the crazy decisions that he he made, uh, because they were the right thing to do for the the has been a real treat this year and it's an honor i mean that you're right that company started the hot rodding industry 83 years old and when i walk around their facility today i can feel the legacy uh you know I, that's my favorite thing to do after 38 when the employees start to go home I simply roam around the facility and look at the pictures, and for me, I can just feel the history. But, I mean, that, that puts a big responsibility on your shoulders because, I mean, that is a big brand. That is a big, a huge heritage, big brand that, that you now are going to start uh, help pilot moving forward. Um, is that, has that been giving you some sleepless nights? <laughs> no, I choose to believe it's it's an opportunity, and I embrace the opportunity. Um, you know, maybe that's a mentality that comes from my racing that uh, you just appreciate opportunity and the opportunity to work with a brand that has that heritage. Uh, really, something that that people dream about. So I, I appreciate how we are. I'm excited about what we can do and still show respect the heritage, but also modernize the brand. That's really the balance that we've got to try to strike. And uh, I think we'll, uh, we've got great people involved on both companies that are really here because of passion for this and they care deep down they think about what happened to these companies. But uh, I mean, talking about modernizing, I mean, the, the industry is changing and it's changing fast at the moment. I mean, and I, I think Lockdown has actually accelerated a lot of things that, that guys were looking. I mean, look, we, we know social media, uh, online marketing, online advertising, all these things has, you know, it's sped up so fast at the moment. That it's a completely different point of view. How are you seeing, I mean, and now the added pressure of electrical cars, uh, consumption, what's the fuel consumptions, all these type of things, that's big how, how are you guys looking at this from a performance brand and moving forward? I mean, trying to, to deal with all these massive changes. Joe, we really put in two different worlds. You know, you've got to be really good at the stuff that pays the bills today, but you always have to be working on the future uh, because we know all those alternative technologies are coming and they're coming fast. So, uh, we continue to be mindful of that. We we have pioneering type products uh, that work towards that. But we also want to serve the customers really well today. And those customers today, you know, they're internal combustion engines. They're about making horsepower, uh, all the, the normal staples of our industry. So uh, we're just really mindful of serving kind of both masters. And uh, we're building this integrated company to do that. You know, I think that's one of the unique that we have is in some ways we get to start with a clean shooter. It's not about, you know, how how Comp did it in the past or how Ambrock did it in the past. How do we need to do it for tomorrow? And uh, that's really what we're focused on. And, and yeah, that's, 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 uh, I heard something. Someone said that the, the worst words you can use in a business is, but we've been doing this like this for so long. You know, that, that's the worst, uh, worst thing you can hear in a business these days. Um, but with technology now, I mean, from the, the stock 350s, you know, which oh, I mean, last time I heard what the three and a half million, four million 350s have been sold over the years so far. Um, now the LS, the LS market that, that's kicking in. And the, I mean, the LS market is now starting to kick in slowly but surely in South Africa. And guys understand that, that you, you, you still got your option of a crate motor that, I mean, that you guys supply. Um, but on the, on, on the second end motor parts, those 350s just aren't available like they like they used to. So the, and the, because of the amount of LS motors that, that are, are coming in, I mean, the, the, the biggest one is the silver, uh, the, what's it? The gen five, they, they streaming in at the moment. Um, 
so this market is building up. I mean, worldwide, every everything is like everyone says, everything's Alice swap at the moment. But it makes sense at the same time. There, there's been a bit of a, uh, a surge in the last 12 to 18 months with the Gen 3 Hemi engine platform. So the late model Hemi platform yeah. probably has more momentum right now in the domestic market here in the States, uh, even than the LS. It, it feels like the LS is somewhat plateaued uh, really? and that Gen 3 Hemi market is really starting to hit its stride. But, but Mopa in general, has expanded a lot over the last few over the last few years that, that which which makes me sad we 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 don't really have them we don't have chryslers here i think that we the only chrysler we had was the 300c which was a more model modern car which was available here and then obviously the the jeep um grand cherokees that came out with the hemis so we we don't have that following so there's a lot of motors and even through the 70s and 80s, we didn't have that much Mopar, a lot of V8 Mopar. So Mopars are going for ridiculous prices in South Africa because they, they are just so scarce. Um, you know, they, this is no cars available at the moment. Um, and every guy you meet just, you know, thanks to Fast and the Furious, wants to bring in Dodge Chargers, you know? For sure. You know, it's quite the opposite here in the States. Uh, they're so plentiful. I mean, you can drive down the street and at every stoplight, you're going to run into a Charger or a Challenger. And, uh, uh, you know, a lot of rental car companies use those in their fleets. So now they're starting to put them out on the street as secondhand cars, very affordable. And uh, they're really just uh, hitting, hitting their stride here uh, for modification. So that's great to see for our market because our market really feeds off of those OE platforms, you know, three to five years after launch. So yeah, exactly. uh, that's, that's been nice to see. But I mean, like, like you were just saying, is, is that always been the platform with, with you guys with, you know, it's the, the cars that are out of motor plan, you know, all the warranties, everything's gone. Uh, now it's playtime, you know, and now the bank doesn't own it anymore. Now it's yours. <laughs> So now you can start doing what, what you want to do. How is the supercharged market and everything? I mean, we, we said the, we, we found a difference in, in the market where and in South Africa, you, you had guys years ago that it was all about, it was a, the overall package. It was about performance and it was about look and styling and all this type of stuff. And then it changed. Um, then all of a sudden, it wasn't about performance. It was more about the style and the look and feel and everything that came with it. It was, you know, it's it more street rod orientated, even in the muscle cars. But in the last four or five years, it looks like it's just hardcore back into horsepower again. You know, um, the, I mean, the, the pro stock cars and the, that pro stock look is just expanding like you can't go. Uh, are you guys seeing that more that that emphasis is back on? horsepower and performance and that type of stuff? Yeah, there, there's definitely been a surge back on the performance side of the industry uh, this year, especially as people have had time and maybe some extra money in some cases. Uh, but you mentioned the supercharger business and that's that's been a fun category to start to work with, uh, with the Edelbrock group because it's uh, one of our fastest growing categories as a business. And it's a different type of customer in some cases. There mm -hmm. are those that are really just focused around the performance side. But then there's also a customer segment that their car is only one to two years old, still under warranty, and they're looking for additional towing horsepower. They're looking for it to remain car legal, uh, you know, from an emissions standpoint. So that's really not a horsepower customer other than the fact they want to tow their boat faster or they want to tow their RV better uh, at that point. So totally different customer than I'm used to here at Comp Cams where we've been so focused on that horsepower customer and it's uh, been a lot of fun to work with. That, that is, I mean, that, that brings me to another section that, that we've been finding is the four by four market it's just busy changing everything at the moment. I mean, when, when I was talking to, to Wade Kawasaki and everybody on, on, on the show, we were saying that you're going to we we seeing 
well, a lot of old Broncos, old Blazers. That that's now that's now becoming the Mustang and the Camaros of, of five years ago. You know, that's the cars that the guys are customizing. So you've got the performance, but like you see, you've got the big torque, big wheel, everything that goes with it. Um, I mean, I, I was looking on Edelbrecht's, Edelbrecht's site. I mean, they, they're they focusing on great motors just for trucks at the moment, which is actually, in the, back in the day, it was, like I said, it was more street road orientated, you know, it was more, oh, this is what you got to put back into your, you know, Chevy Camaro or your 32 Ford or something like that. Um, that I, I see that, that part of the market's changing completely as well. It is. Trucks in general as a category, uh, you know, are growing so fast. And it's really uh, fascinating to see because certain truck platforms that, 20 years ago, uh, people didn't want to drive those trucks. They were albatrosses or, uh, you know, that people made fun of them if you drove them. Uh, they've now become the hot platform. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's the trends move around from year to year. But what doesn't change is it's always cool to go fast or to personalize your vehicle. It's an extension of, of people and their personalities and their characters. And, you know, kind of to flip it to the future look, I believe that no matter what we're driving, what we're riding in, that people are still going to want to personalize them and, and whether that be performance or the look. And so uh, when people start talking about the end of the performance aftermarket, I just don't buy into that because uh, I think that uh, that's always going to be there. It's going to change and it's going to look different 20 years from now than it does today, uh, but it's still going to be there at its core. I, I, you know, that's, that's, that's a very interesting part. I mean, if, if people think that there's going to be an end to the, the aftermarket part, it, it's absolutely impossible because guys are still producing. You know, a, a 32 will always be a 32, you know. Um, like, we, like we say with, with SA Hot Rod Magazine, if I can have a classic truck and a Mustang on my cover every month, uh, I know my sales always does great. Um, we're, we're, a, we're a truck country. We love old trucks um, or any truck, basically. Um, and I don't know. Like I said, that in individualism it will always be there. I mean, to give you an example, what's it? Um, Elon Musk launches the Cybertruck. And it took two days for head to internet to customize. Two days. I mean, <laughs> it just doesn't matter what they're going to throw out there. Someone's going to find a way to make it faster, you know, make it bigger, or make it higher, or make it lower, um, and or just like I said, change it in, in some in some particular way. I think the aftermarket will never go anywhere. It will change. It will be different. Um, look, I, I know that car manufacturers are, are, are trying to clamp down on, on modifications on their cars. And where I, I used to think that they're trying to control things. I, recently, I, I've had a lot of conversations and I'm understanding it is, cars are becoming so sophisticated these days. It's not like in the old days. You just whip out the motor and drop in another one. I mean, um, my friend Brett, he, he owns Rockford Fuzzcake in South Africa. And he was telling me that the modern cars aren't coming out with sound deadening. They're coming out with speakers in the roof that plays a monotone against the road noise to cancel out road noise. And he says, so now you have to think from an aftermarket to, to install car sound into that. That's what you have to deal with. <laughs> you have to put in a system that not only talks to everything, but then deals with this type of stuff. And it shows the level of sophistication that where the aftermarket is going uh, more than anything else. So, I mean, you guys are selling the same thing. You don't want to produce a supercharger that a guy's going to put onto uh, his Dodge Challenger. Um, that's not going to work with, with any of the ECU or any of the systems that's going to through it. It's, it means that it's more R and D from your side, there, and more way of producing a safe product that's going out there. Am I correct? 
Yeah, exactly. I, I would tell you that the uh, the motivation for us now with the current market conditions and the customer expectations is really to to build packages. You know, you have to take all those systems into account. No longer can we just sell a camshaft and leave it up to the customer to figure it out. You know, we, we have to, to really design, test, and engineer packages that are made to work with every part of the vehicle. And I think that's going to that's gonna be the way the market goes uh, into the future. And unfortunately, some of the small and mid-sized businesses, they're going to have a hard time adapting from a technology standpoint to that because the cars are so sophisticated. And, uh, you know, that's my fear as a SEMA board member is how do we support those small and mid-sized businesses that are really the lifeblood of the industry? Uh, because if these cars become so sophisticated that they can't, uh, they don't have access to the technology, they don't have the business structure to really develop on that level, then we've got a problem as an industry. So SEMA is working really hard to try to provide some of those support resources mm -hmm to where those small businesses may not be able to afford them on their own. Obviously with COVID, I, I've, I've spoken to a lot of companies um, and a lot of overseas companies. And I identified a, like in South Africa, for instance, how, how our market works with, with the US, okay? Hmm. And what you just said now is, is a big problem that, we, that we're all facing at the moment is the fact that because technology is moving forward, your shops are the smaller shops that don't understand. Um, you know, they, they, they're still all 350 people, carburetor, carburetor. I mean, you, you throw a, uh, what's it, something like the EFI system or something in there and you know, they, their minds just, they, they don't understand that because it's new technology. And as soon as you talk about electrics, they freak out. Um, and I've been looking at, I'm looking at a bunch of products and going, well, okay. So what we need to start doing is we need to start educating the market. We need to somehow create an infrastructure where when a product gets purchased, it needs to go to a registered shop. Um, because the, if it doesn't go to a registered shop, the problems that we're facing is You've got someone that's now trying to figure it out and he's charging the client. Um, it's not working right. And the client thinks that your product's bad. You know, oh, it doesn't work. So we need to now go for something else. So it, it creates a knock on effect the whole time going, or something goes wrong. The product becomes faulty through a power surge or something. And then the car stands for three months while they're trying to ship it back to the U S to see what the problem is and ship back. Edelbrox got seven distributors in South Africa at the moment, which scares me because I know so many more companies that sell their products, but there's only seven that's registered. Um, and it worries me watching the technology and the fact that there's no training behind it and the after sales service more than anything else. Cause I mean, uh, anything can happen with a product across the world, you know, moving it from one place to the next, which means if there's a fault, and I mean, there was currently, uh, I was just at the guy's shop. He's got a car that's now been standing for four months because they, they purchased um, an EFI product, but there was a problem with them and had to go back to the US. Um, now, it doesn't sound like a problem, but if you've got 10 bays in your shop and you got four bays sitting waiting for parts, for four or four, five months, you know, you're, you're closing down very quickly. You're going to, you're going to run out because I might have, have a solution on how we can actually work together because to me, it, it, it goes both ways. It's one thing getting a product into another country. It's another thing, getting it right. Um, and getting the people that on the ground, that's put, that's selling the product actually educated, trained and getting the information out into the market at the same time. You know, that's, that's the other problem from a marketing perspective. Um, yeah. I would love to have that conversation because I think you're on the right track. I mean, if I try to look into the future 10, 15 years, we've got to figure out who's going to install these parts because the average consumer is not going to be able to do it anymore. Exactly. We're going to, we're going to have to have certified whether they're in, independently owned and, and we certify them or whether they're company owned installation mm. shops, you've got to have an answer for who's going to install this stuff. 
Exactly. And, and expecting a, trying to get a, sh uh, running a call center 24 hours, getting a South African guy with, especially if you're hitting some real Afrikaans guy and you can't understand his accent at all, trying to explain to someone in the US what's going on. Uh, it, it just creates a nightmare. COVID's now hit. You guys are now changing. What's on the cards? I mean, Seba's gone. So, so what are you guys going to do now? What, what's on the cards? What can, what can we start expecting to see from this side? Well, let's kind of look at it two different ways. Internally, we're working really hard to try to, to focus on the best of Edelbrock and the best of comp and bring that together. So I think you're going to start to see product development that utilizes product from both families of brands. Nice. Uh, you're going to see very aggressive product development because that is the lifeblood of this industry is uh, launching the new products and staying up on technology. Uh, externally, I think you're going to see us uh, really get back aggressive uh, in the marketplace with our marketing and our message to the consumers education being a big part of that. Uh, as we've talked about, you know, the, the customer base is changing and we have to really serve a lot of different customer types. Uh, but I think in, in this day and world, uh, the beautiful thing is we have tools available to us that we've never had before. You know, from mm -hmm. a marketing standpoint, we can do cool stuff like these uh, video conferences that we could do video. Uh, we've got a lot of different tools that marketers have never had at their disposal to educate and inform the consumers with accurate information. Mm. There's so much misinformation out there when it comes to products. You know, it's easy to see why a consumer would get frustrated and they don't know what to choose. Uh, so as a company, we're going to really focus on that in the year ahead. And from a racing perspective, anything interesting that you guys have been working, some, some teams you guys have been working with? Yeah, you know, the racing season, scene is always changing, and especially this year as they've hit the COVID period and they've had to change their business models. It's some interesting projects our way, and I can tell you that uh, that is going to continue to be a key part of the combined business between Edelbrock and Comp is – uh, motorsports. It, it's a technology playground. It develops a lot of technology that trickles down to the street. I would tell you Edelbrock has been a little more street oriented. Comp has been a little more race oriented. I think you're going to see Edelbrock uh, really focus a little bit more on motorsports and, and trying to use that as the technology playground and uh, bring those, those products back down to the street. Oh, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be really awesome. Let's, let's, let's hope. I mean, actually, let's hope. I can't wait to see this. So when, when you say combination, does this mean that you guys are going to start producing great motors that's got a little bit of everything in it? So that's, that's like the launch of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's the so best combination. <laughs> you're going to have crate engines that have uh, comp performance group brands in it. You know, you can get a TCI transmission that's made oh, to wow. work with your crate engine. Uh, you're going to be able to do supercharger kits that also have valve train packages that are designed to go with the supercharger. So there's all kinds of cool combinations and packages that we can develop and test, you know, right? That's the world we live in. Mm. They just don't want to to say, hey, take this package. It's the greatest thing because we say it's the greatest thing. They want to see some test results. They want to know exactly how it's going to going to function and is it going to be easy to install. So that's that's really what we're working on right now is trying to take the best of all these brands and companies. But you guys, you guys are now going for, I kind of put, an all all out solution. I mean, you covering everything from from you know, motor transmission, everything all the way through. You, there, there's, there's no part that you guys are missing there. You can supply, I mean, that, that must give you guys a very good, a, a better understanding. Because, you know, how they always say, it's great to specialize in one thing, but understanding the whole system in a, in a general and how everything works together, I mean, that's crucial more than anything. And now you guys have the ability. You can test everything moving through. But you, it's not just... Oh, you got your hands on a great motor. You know, you guys have everything internally and see how you can combine to build that pro or those products to, to the best of their ability. Am I correct? 
Exactly. It really is about engineered solutions. It's, it's not about a single product anymore. Uh, so our product development team, you know, uh, uh, we're so fortunate to have the talent that we do between the two organizations. And those guys, uh, they're walking around floating in the clouds right now because they get so many different cool products. And when you start letting your mind really think about the possibilities, uh, it's endless. And so the dinos, I can hear them running right now. Those things have been running nonstop and spintrons and, of course, the vehicle test fleet. So uh, it's, it's an exciting time to be around this company and the journey yes. we're on. And, uh, you know, I pinch myself every day that I get to be a part of it. Well, to, to, I, I look at it from like an, an engineer's perspective. I mean, you, you guys are making a product. Now, now you've got the Edelbrock guys sitting there and you're like, why did you make it that way? Now you can find the, I understand why you did it, but why did you go? Now you can get that story behind it. I mean, that, that must be crucial. That, that must be a big, that's a big step, you know? Understanding why everything was done the way it was done, why, how it, uh, it got there, you know? Yeah, those conversations are already happening. And you see the light bulbs go off with the engineers because they start talking and they realize that, oh, maybe maybe we should have made it different, you know, to work better with the other side. And it really goes one step further because with Edelbrock owning a foundry, an aluminum foundry, yeah. we can take it all the way back to the casting now. Wow. And, you know, we're, we're starting to see to where we can optimize the castings and they benefit the end package all the way at the opposite end of the process. So uh, it, it's an exciting time. And uh, you see me smiling a lot because it really is a cool time to be involved with these companies. Well, listen, I, I hope when, when all of this is over, we can, I can finally come visit and then I'd love to come see your, your, your infrastructure and everything that you guys have going there. I think it's going to be really great. Um, I, I know you're a busy guy. Uh, today is actually um, National what's it, Heritage Day on our side. Um, okay. So it's actually public holidays. So I need to go light a fire and go drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> that works on any day. Exactly. Well, you know, that, we, we just got an excuse today to do it. But yeah, Chris, thank you so much for talking to me. Um, I'm going to send you a mail regarding uh, everything and some other stuff that we spoke about and how we can fix it, how we can help educate the market. Because to me, that that is always the key when it comes to all of this. There's this, like you said, there's so much misinformation going out when it comes to everything, setting up motors, building motors. Every every guy's cousin's uncle has some idea um, of how they should do it. Um, and I, I've seen in the market, there's been too many, too many mistakes. Um, so there, there must be a way how we can do this and get this going right, you know, and especially with the new stuff. Um, please, you guys need to talk to me. I, I want, now I've got the magazine. I've got everything. I want to get all this info out into the market of everything that you guys are doing. I think it's going to be exciting. Um, but so thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And thanks for the great work that you're doing. I, I've dabbled in the media business. I know how tough that business is. Uh, so kudos to you. Keep up the great work and it's a pleasure to join you today. Excellent. Well, maybe we should just do as just get you to come visit South Africa in the next few months. Yeah, I think come come see how things are going on on this side. I see a great road trip ahead. Exactly. Exactly. Chris, you have a good evening, sir. Enjoy your day. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.